The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 5th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, go ahead and send me an email. Fire that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, today we've got a sea of green. Yesterday was a sea of red. You've got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside, all the sectors in the S&P 500 trading to the upside. The Dow's up 462, one in four tenths, one in six tenths for the S&P or 63, one in seven tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 219, one in nine tenths for the Russell. That's about 33 points to the upside. Semi's up a little over 1%, 35 points there. Trending's up 1.5%, 216 points. Gold is off 38 bucks. Silver's down 77 cents. Light three crude is up nearly three bucks. Uh, natural gas is up uh, about four pennies. The 30-year treasury printing out at 130.28. That is off one point and eight ticks. Now lead the charge dollar-wise the upside. You've got Mercado Libre up 32 bucks. The Cigna Group 18. Bill Holdings 15. Broadcom 15 and Intuit up 13. The downside is BioRad Laboratories down 18% or 81 bucks. Monolithic Power Systems 52 bucks 11%. EPAM 21 bucks 8%. Altassian 15 bucks 11%. Paylocity 12 bucks 7%. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But we're going to begin the day by taking a look at uh, those questions coming in about, you know, what's going on in the market? So we're getting ready to take off top side. Have we broken out? Do we've got large A to B equal CD patterns, the upside. So the easiest way for me to answer that question, since it is Friday and it is the end of the week, let's go look at the weekly charts. What are they telling us? Well, if we take a look at that's the daily charts, let's go take a look at the weekly charts. There we go. Now we got the weekly charts. So where are we? Well, this week, the ES Mini has formed a new profile. That new profile is within the prior weekly profile. Now, you know what message that has. Uh, we started the day by when we started the uh, 11 o'clock update by taking a look at consolidation after consolidation after consolidation after consolidation. That's the message of this profile here, is to expect the consolidation pattern to continue. Look, nonetheless, right now, there's resistance inside the ES Mini at 42.06, the high so far this week. 4206. That's resistance until it gets taken out. Don't know whether there'll be an A to B equal C to the upside D, but if it does get taken out, you really need to get a close above 424325. That's number to have on your pad of paper. We get a close above that, then we can start talking about an A to B equal C to the upside inside of the ES mini. But not until then. If we take a look at the NQ. Beautiful day today. You know, Apple, and we took a look at the NDX 100, the top 10 yesterday, uh, as the markets were moving lower out there. We didn't see any significant damage that was going on. We had that Roadsman indicator top in Apple, which ended up holding the trend at day's end. But inside the NQ, it also has resistance at the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. That level, 
13,349. What's the high of the week? 13,370. So we did spike above it, but we are trading right now at uh, 13,255. Now that has a new profile that formed a few weeks back. And that profile suggests that uh, prices should continue to move higher. That is if price closes above 13,348. Inside the Dow, the Dow is consolidating with inside its weekly profile. The resistance level here is at 34,798. In order to trigger an A to B equal CD pattern, the Dow equity future contract would need to close above 35,475. And the Russell 2000 on a weekly basis, all that it's done this week is pull back to test trend line support. There's two trend line support areas. It's basically tested both of those. It's trading below profiles out here. So we're not talking about A to B equal CD patterns, the upside in it. It has the potential for A to B equal CD patterns to the downside. But right now, that's not what we have. What we really have is a consolidation going on inside these markets out here, and not just the equity markets. We took a look at gold and silver and the U.S. dollar, um, the 30-year bond out here. There's a lot of consolidation, so let's not forget that. So there's my there's, that's what the market outlook is with regard to uh, the equity future contracts, those four. Of course, we can take a quick peek here at the daily time frame, what's going on on a daily basis. I've just drawn in the one consolidation pattern inside the ES Mini. You can visually see it inside the NQ right here. Uh, the, the consolidation pattern for the uh, Dow, it's, it's, it's not that easy to draw in here. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, convinced about that. We do have two different profile levels inside the Dow. This is the June contract, and we can see that price did find support this week at the bottom of that profile. That was at that 33,228 uh, 33, uh, level out there. So that's, that's what I have to share with you with regard to these charts. Uh, what else can I share with you? Great question. So let's take a look. What do I have? Let's take a look at New York Stock Exchange. Yesterday we discussed how the New York Stock Exchange, its advanced decline oscillator, that was courtesy of Peter from Park City, had, had was trading into the oversold territory. Oversold territory is at the minus 150 area. How do you get to minus 150? The advanced decline oscillator takes the advanced decline line, and then it takes a look at the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. That is what that is represented by. Now, the advanced decline oscillator still is below zero. When it remains below zero, it tells us that sellers are the ones that are in control of the general markets out there. So that's that's the signal. The signal is we got to over sold status over oversold status i say overbought i hope i didn't oversold status if i did you know what i meant uh and now that condition is just being worked off if we get back above that zero threshold line then the, the, the ball shifts and when i say that ball shifts it puts it back in the uh, position of uh, buyers having the upper edge out there um if we take a look at uh, the spot volatilities well the spot volatilities price is below that 50-day expense moving average at 1911 and that does give uh, buyers the edge out here if we take a look at where's price trade in relationship to its uh, apogee pivot points still got some resistance got some proof for the ES Mini. The ES Mini is targeting that level. That's at the 4155 area. It likely will get up there. The question is, does it peter out at that point in time? The NQ is trading above Apogee. That says uh, be looking for any pullbacks to find support at that 13 234 level out there. Anything else that I can share with you on these charts? I think the answer here is uh, no. So let's move on. Let's move on to where? Excellent question. Let's go move on to the uh, intraday charts here. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a break. We've got several questions that have come in. Roger wants to look at Apple, SP, Gush. Hector wants to look at Cat and John Deere. Roger wants to take a look at NSC. And I see a couple other requests in the den. So let's go to requests as soon as we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Hey, we're going to get to the requests here in a moment. What I want to do is go over to the equity futures and, and provide at least some parameters out here. So it's the 60-minute time frame charts that I've got up on my screen right now. The reason that I've got this up here is we have two TD9 count tops that are going to be completed at uh, 12 noon. Um, so, and, and when I say complete, they've already confirmed. That's for the Dow, and that's for the Russell 2000. Now, assuming that we don't make a higher high between now and 12 noon, I don't know whether we will or we won't. I'm going to give you the numbers. If we do, then these numbers are not applicable. If you were to see a close above at this stage here for the Dow equity future contract, a close above 33,683, that's telling you it's going to head higher. Now, that head higher would take us up to 33,897, may take us beyond that. That would be the next battle. So watch that level. Inside the Russell 2000, the area to watch is 17,6290. If price closes above that, we get back to the highs of yesterday afternoon, about the 1778-ish uh, area. In the case of the ES Mini, it will. Um, it, it's trying to generate a TD9 count top. It needs to spike above the current high, but it needs to do that between now and 1 p.m. And that high currently is 41, 41, 75. But you know that, and so you need to see a spike above that. Um, that's not like the threshold levels that I gave you for the Dow and for the Russell 2000. So if it does spike above that between now and 1 p.m., we're likely to get a TD9 count top there as well. In the case of the NQ, you're only in bar number seven right now. So that says, you know, we're not going to see anything there until days end. And the NQ is the one that really is powering things higher out here. Real quick, let me check on the 120-minute charts for you. Let's bring up all of them, see if we can find any kind of synergy here. 120-minute equity futures. Let's pull these up, and then we'll go over to the request. So you've got some parameters to, to look at and that are established. And, yeah, so here on the 120 minutes, it's the ES, the, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 that are going to uh, com confirm TD9 count top. So this this candle here that we're in completes at nine at uh, nine at 12 noon. So you're going to get a confirmed ES mini TD9 count, 
and you're going to get a uh, YM uh, confirmed TD9 count, and you already have a confirmed one on the Russell 2000. So the Russell 2000 confirms its count, uh, completes the pattern by 12 noon out here. So in this case, again, the NQ is the holdout here, and it says I'm not done running higher out here. Remember, it can be the bar following bar number nine that identifies those tops. And lastly, let's just pull up the 30-minute charts, see if there's anything here. I think there's at least one, but let's just take a quick peek here on the 30-minute time frame. And on the 30-minute time frame, what we can see here as soon as these charts populate, come on, come on, delayed, delayed. So you've got the ESMA negated its TD9 top immediately. The Dow's got one right now, and that's it. So I think it's the 60 and the 120 that are going to be a bit better for you. In the case of the Dow, if you get over that high that we're taking a look at on a 30-minute basis out here, that's going to negate that signal and say we move higher. The ES Mini is uh, suggesting that we move higher uh, anyway. So that's what we're taking a look at for the equity future contract to help establish what the markets are uh, taking a look at uh, do doing, doing for the rest of the day. Roger writes in, and Roger wants to take a look at Apple. And Roger, I, I was trying to follow your email. You, you came in yesterday, so thankfully I was able to uh, locate it. Uh, we're going to change panels and take a look at A to B equals CD patterns, swing points. Was you were t you were looking at more of a traditional versus, let's say, the Stevie methods that I use out here. So let's take a look at the Apple. And so the first thing, when you were taking a look at retracements, I'm going to the bigger time frame here. And on the bigger time frame, where we're just simply taking a look at what is Apple's message. Now, that bigger time frame being the monthly time frame, we're going to go from its swing high. That's from uh, January of 2022 all the way down to the low of uh, January 2023. And we can see uh, that what Apple is doing right now, this is a monthly time frame, it's early in the month, but it is trading above both the top of its profile, 168.79, and its 0.786 retracement. Now, the volume that it's going up against is 2.1 billion. It's so early in the month, no way to, for us to extrapolate whether we're moving in with volume or not volume. We'd have to look at the weekly and the daily to try to assess that. But nonetheless, this is telling us that what Apple wants to do is get back that 182.94 level. Now, if we look at the weekly chart, so we're going from right to left. On the weekly chart, it's pretty easy for us to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, that B point out here, which is the week that began January 30th, at volume of 480 million shares, that's never been passed with volume. So we're coming up with a lighter volume. Maybe today would be the day. I doubt it. Uh, it's not going to be today. It would need another 100 some odd million shares. So that's not going to, that is not likely to happen. That's yeah, not going to happen. But nonetheless, you do have an A to B equals CD pattern. You don't always get the confirmation, but the pattern is present. And that pattern shows a 41% retracement on that B to C leg. This tells us that more likely than not, this will do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. The one-to-one -one price projection level, 177.11. The one-to-one, 0.272. 186.14. I think that's more like the outcome. That matches what we're taking a look at on the weekly time frame out there. If we look at the daily, what do we have on the daily? Well, the daily is going to really show the same A to B equals CD pattern we're looking at on the weekly. So there's no reason for us to clutter that chart. Price is trading above the top of its profile out there. You've got really great volume, and it's 56 million shares today. As I mentioned earlier, yesterday, the downside, it was 81 million shares. So we're going to do more volume, or it should do more volume than 81 million shares as this thing moves to the upside. Now, you were taking a look at, I believe you were trying to put in Fibonacci expansions. So I'm just going to take a look at a Fibonacci expansion from the swing high out here, the most recent set of swing points that I've got that, that really stick out at me. That's the high from the trading session of February 3rd down to the low of March the 2nd. And when we take a look at the expansions of that, we are now above the one, we're now above the 2.0 expansion. And that's as we head to the 2.618 expansion. That gives us a 179 level. So what Apple is really signaling to you and I, at least at this stage of the game here, and I'll flip over to the other charts, is a move up to the 179. 177, 186, and 182, 94. All of those suggesting that we move higher. Now, let's go switch over just to complete the look at the Apple out there. So I hope, Roger, that that helped you out. I tried to follow along as best as I could uh, with your uh, with your charts. Not so easy for me to see it on my uh, phone out there. Um, uh, now let me go ahead and switch over to this set of Apple charts. Give me a moment. This is going to be a multi-panel. even has the yearly on it. And hear what we know about Apple. Sorry, we in a total breakout mode. Was it Stevie's interpretation of what the charts were communicating to us, telling us that we're just in an all breakout mode? No, that's not what I said. I was just telling you where price is likely to head to. If we take a look at that uh, monthly chart, you've got a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Not until those highs get taken out. 
will we have a breakout message? And if we take a look at the weekly chart, you've got you are now in bar number eight of a TD nine count. That says that Apple should top between this week and two weeks out from now. Where are we going to get the signal for that 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 might happen? Well, the daily would be a good place, and the daily negated a Rosemont indicator top, and uh, so uh, not until we get the next bearish reversal signal on the daily time frame will we perhaps consider that this TD nine count top is likely to uh, perform. So it looks like Apple. Um, you know, it is bullish right now, but it's not like ultra bullish because of that monthly roads momentum indicator wave number seven and a TD nine count top that is uh, present there. So, Roger, I hope that that helped you out. And thanks so much for the request out there. We've got a request to take a look at uh, Gush. Uh, Gush uh, is for S&P. Just want to understand the profile levels, I believe, that were out there. So let's switch over to the uh, Gush chart. Here. I believe we can get this done before we go to the uh, before we go to the uh, breakout there, Gush. So we take a look at Gush S&P, the oscillator and change line, 111.47. Profiles are all above it on a daily time frame, 117.41. So there's no support to the downside. You're below profiles on the weekly time frame. That uh, profile was at 127.75 out there. Oscillator and change line at 123.66. And the monthly chart for something like Gush, totally useless. See you with TFNN. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's take a look at a uh, question uh, coming in from Hector and Patty. Hector says, happy, fantastic Friday. Back at you. Caterpillar, A to B equals CD down. Buy the D point. Is it valid from April 27th? So let's figure out where April 27th is at. April 27th. So this is where Hector is looking at this, this candle session out there. And that candle session is not a bullish reversal candle. So you can see the A to B equals CD that I've got drawn in here on the uh, uh, weekly time frame. So no reason for me to redraw that in. Um, that would be using this swing point right here from the daily standpoint uh, from uh, February 24th. So the A point would be up here at the high of January 27th, and the C point would be this high from March the 6th. So that would give your A to B equals CD. We're beyond the 1 to 1 1.272, and no, that does not confirm that to pattern. What did confirm it, though, just so you know, was this uh, candle session right here. And this was a bull sash candle. So it was really April 10th, uh, Patty and uh, Hector, that confirmed that pattern. And that set up, when you get a bull sash candle, it would be the low of the uh, of the candle formation out here. And so, therefore, support is down at uh, 208.94. And that level was tested. Now, there was only volume of about 4 million shares. There. That was tested with some big volume, 7.7 .7 million shares on that day that you were looking at, April 27th. So you're, you're close. No cigar, though. But you do have a buy the D point pattern on the uh, daily time frame. And right now, price is consolidating with inside its profile of 211.43 to 221.39. You also ask about John Deere. DE is the uh, ticker sum. So let's go ahead and get uh, that up. And um, and here, the question is, dear, an A to B equals CD down to, again, April 27th. So April 27th, give me a second here. April 27th is this, uh, nope, this one right there. No, that's the 28th. So the 27th, the bar on the 27th, um, for, for dear, no, that is not a, a bullish uh, reversal candle out there let me uh what i do here let me up uh, oh, oh i know what i did sorry um sorry folks with multitasking so just kind of like so there were really here you can see the a to b equals cd to the downside basically making about a one to um about a one to 1.618 real close to it and so this was confirmed a couple different times so the first a to B, or by the D point, Hector and Patty, on the daily base was confirmed here on April 10th. And April 10th, you had that nice big old bullish engulfing candle. And that's what you had here on the trading day of April the 28th. So maybe your question was, did that uh, that candle session uh, form a, a, a by the D point? It was the session afterwards, technically, but is that low, the valid low or support? It is, 371.85 out there. Now look, in the case of John Deere, you're trading below the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. Not exactly great out here. The monthly, um, I don't have a reason for it to continue to head lower, but that trend line sure looks appetizing. You know, we're trading below profile on the uh, daily time frame. So John Deere is far from out of the woods, so to speak. So I hope that helped you out with both those instruments. Thanks so much, Hector and Patty, and have a, a fabulous Friday and a fantastic weekend. Let's get to our next request. The next request is for NSC, and that is from Roger. And so I'm going to switch over to the other charts out here. And Roger's looking to possibly exit some long positions. So we take a look at uh, this instrument. What do we have out here? Well, you've got a consolidation with inside the current profile, or it's trying to get back inside the profile is what I really should say, 207.07. You have a TD9 count top, took price lower into a swing point. The swing point had volume of 1.4 million shares, and it came down with 1.5 million shares. And yesterday was testing that swing point with 1.3 million shares. So I don't know that this is this is in somewhat in somewhat of a consolidation oriented type pattern, uh, Roger. The daily time frame says if you're looking to take this off, what I would do is I would wait to see, assuming that it closes above 207.07 today. What does price do as it gets towards this swing point low? This is the swing point from April 21st. The low is 211.43. Is moving into that with more than 3.4 million shares and if the answer is yes well then it's likely to at least get to 213.38 maybe even take out that swing high at 215.18 if it's moving in with light volume then 213.38 would likely be the resistance level out there um, you've got a wonderful td9 count bottom 
on the uh, weekly time frame. But the issue there is price been unable to clear that oscillator and change line. So 210.14 would be another area to consider taking price off at. And the monthly chart, just not helping us much at all. You're likely to get a uh, close higher today. That'll give you a two bar, potential two bar knee jerk reaction out there. Uh, that's certainly the way that has been on a couple of these uh, rallies out here for it. So uh, I would expect to see a, I wouldn't be surprised to at least a one to two day uh, pullback that begins on Monday or Tuesday of next week. So I hope that helps you out uh, with regard to NSC. Bob in Spokane wanted to take a look at uh, PTRA, Petra. So let's go see if we can uh, load that up here. Where did Stevie put that? Here we go. So this is PTRA. Uh, let me actually, I'm sure that some of these are off just a tad with regard to where they're trading. I show a buck 39. No, it is a buck 39. I don't recall the question. Might have been just to look at it. Trade above the top of the daily profile. It formed a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. It does that on April 27th. You're potentially going to get a confirmed Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom on the uh, on the weekly chart. But what price really needs to do is get back above 152. It doesn't have to do it today, but you're looking for price to close above 152 on a weekly basis. So then suggest a rally up to 243. Nothing on the uh, monthly time frame out there. Um, really not much else that I can uh, provide to you, Bob, uh, other than let's look at a 30 minute chart. I do see a TD9 count top. So here, if this is going to head higher today, uh, you'll need to see a close today or tomorrow or, or Monday, I guess I should say, would be a close above 142. That's the TD9 count top. It hasn't broken down or anything. If it did break down, price would pull back to 130 or 127 would be the uh, those targets to the downside. So overall, looks pretty good. You do have some resistance up at that buck 52 level, and that's where price should at least uh, navigate to. So I do hope that that helps you out. Now, the next request coming in, I know I don't have this set up, so we're going to have to set these things up one at a time. It is SPOK. And SPOK, this is for defining time inside our Tiger's Den. Uh, SPOK, don't recall if I've ever looked at this, but we are today. Spooky. It is the uh, Spook Spock Holdings out here. So no idea what's inside there. I sure want to know. If we take a look at this, you could get a, a Rosemont indicator top today. You could also get a wave number seven top today. That is letter G. And you have a new profile that formed yesterday. And 1307 is the resistance level. It is a bullish structured profile defining time. That says you have support between 1213 and 1232. So it looks like you're getting a topping pattern today. On a weekly basis, it says, I don't know what kind of topping pattern you're talking about. The monthly says, I know exactly what kind you're talking about. And that's a TD9 count top. Now, that TD9 count top is going to go ahead and complete this month. The monthly chart is going against a swing point from January 2021, 1.5 million shares. Last month, you moved into it with 5 million shares, so that said we should test the top. Well, it's done that this month. This month, though, you're already in with 1.3 million and only five, four and a half days of trading versus 1.5. Wow. This thing is really taking a run for it. So it's the daily that you've got the uh, concern with out here. And you just need to close above yesterday's high to uh, negate those concerns. Otherwise, maybe you just have a consolidation with price pulling back to 12.13 to 12.32. Defining time. I hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We're going to look at Solar Edge, the cash indices. We're going to take a look at AZN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Our next request coming in from GS Mike inside the Tiger's Eye. He's looking for a short for Solar Edge. So, Mike, what stands out to me, so two days ago, price tested a uh, TD9 count bottom. It was also a bullish hammer candle. It was the candle session from March 20th. Now, there was volume there of 1.7 million. This tested it and rejected with 2 million. So it did it with uh, uh, higher volume. Ordinarily, you would have expected that swing point low to be tested again. Maybe that happens in the future. But right now, you had this big gap to the upside yesterday. And price is trading with inside its new profile. That new profile range, that's where price found resistance yesterday. So you want to watch that, um, um, Mike. That resistance, 299.44. So that would have been, that could be, so if you really look, if you got a hankering for shorting it, it would be more up towards 299.44 than 286. Uh, then we're trading right now, which is at 286.05. But the better place to short it from would be the top of the consolidation, up and around the 320-ish type area out there. So, and if you look at the uh, weekly chart, you've got a consolidation. The bottom of that profile has been tested many times over the last year plus, and that bottom is 274.14. So I see a consolidation on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily out there. And consolidations are best sold from uh, uh, from the uh, top of the consolidation versus where it is that uh, you're at right now. So I do hope that that uh, helps you out. Uh, let's go to a caller. We've got John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Excellent. Thanks for your call. CBS, the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the I, yeah, I'm calling store. you about something I've never asked you about, and that is the healthcare uh, stock CVS. Yes. Charlie, Victor, Sammy. Um if you could do a deep dive on the the monthly, weekly, and then daily, my what, what I'm investigating is whether or not technically we've got any data that suggests we're nearing the end of a decline phase. Yeah. Um, just remember, yeah. of course, CVS is not only you know a national pharmacy chain, but it owns Aetna Healthcare, which makes it as much a, um, a health insurance company as a pharmacy. And uh, I, I confess I don't understand uh, uh, what's going on fundamentally with sales and profits to drive the stock from 112 down to uh, 70 where it is now. 
but uh, I am interested in uh, seeing if there are clues of a monthly, weekly, and or daily decline about completing. Perfect. So if we take a look at the patterns that I would use to help us identify a bottom, when it comes to the monthly, it's an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It's in bar number six. It's trading below profiles. And its next price target area would be where it broke out from. And that's down at 56.19. It's trading out right now in the 70 area. So the monthly says lower price. The only way that the monthly chart would say something other would be for a bullish reversal candle to form. Let's go to the weekly chart. If I could draw that A to B equals CD pattern in on the monthly, I most certainly can draw that same pattern in on the weekly. So we know we have that. Do we see a bullish reversal candle? The answer is no. Instead, what we see is price is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. It's been below for the last three weeks. It's below a red oscillator and change line. This says that it wants lower price. The way that the weekly chart right now would generate a bottom pattern because you're only going to be in bar number three, so there's no pattern there. It has triggered a Roach momentum indicator signal. If we were to get a bullish reversal candle, that would then say, well, we at least have a bottom on the weekly time frame. No idea exactly how it would affect the uh, monthly at this stage of the game. And the daily time frame, price is moving lower, doing less relative energy, trading below profiles, trading below red. Uh, well, it's trading just above its red oscillator and change line right now. So this did gap to the upside. So, okay. So you have a gap to the upside, John, and the daily time frame then has confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, what I would say is more likely what's going the outcome here on a further rally for CBS was that it would run up towards its profile levels. That's a bullish structured profile. And so if this is only a counter trend move, price would find resistance at 74.22. It could be 73.69, but 74.22 would be the real key level of resistance to hold. So on a daily time frame, you do have a buy signal. We don't know whether it will, what that will turn into. We don't have anything on the weekly. We don't have anything on the uh, monthly. Um, uh, this was uh, day number three to the downside, or yesterday, I should say, was day number three to the downside. With regard to CBS, it does a lot of uh, three-bar uh, knee-jerk reactions, and at least a one or maybe two uh, bar move to the upside. So that's where we're at right now. So based upon that information, what's your thinking? You know, I uh, I like what I'm seeing uh, parenthetically on that monthly chart, uh, just doing the FIB numbers. We're not quite down to the FIB 786 of the, the, the three-year bull runs, but we're getting close. Uh, I do like this idea on that weekly chart here in the Chapman Wave leg F lower so that's yeah. a pretty far advanced chapman wave count and then you've got that daily with the uh uh rose is it the yeah. rmi rose momentum indicator is that what you call it i do i do yeah 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 it uh i just look at all that and say yeah we've got a candidate for a bottom uh this is <clears throat> and you know how i work steve uh i've always taken to heart the um uh, I think it was the quotation attributed to Paul Tudor Jones, yes. uh, where I think he was being Six interviewed, or seven times. Yeah. and he said, yes, indeed, I did, in fact, catch the exact bottom of yeah. this, that, or the other market, having bought unsuccessfully uh, picking, trying to pick that bottom six prior times. So uh, as I look at it as a bottom picker, I'm tempted to uh, say, hey, this is a candidate for a, a tradable low. This is where this is the first time I've seen uh, it's a setup where you can at least buy and yeah. probe for a bottom, knowing full well that you don't have a bottom yet in place. Perfect, perfect. Well, watch that 74.22. Uh, level uh, for you. And uh, John, is there anything else that I can do for you? Steve, you have a nice weekend. Thanks for your help. You bet. That was John in Philly. Um, so we took a look at uh, Solar Edge. I yeah, we looked at Solar Edge. Then we went to John. So now let's get to Roger's question, which was to pull up the cash indices, just see if we see anything here. So with regard to the cash indices, make sure we're in the right spot. We are. Uh, the Dow could be targeting its oscillator and change line. All of these could be targeting their oscillator and change line. 33,725 for the Dow, the S&P 41,33. And the NASDAQ on a daily basis is sitting at it right now. The exact number for the uh, oscillator and change line is 13,193.38. If we close above that, 
We're at 13199 right now. That's going to suggest that we get back to its high out here. That formed that uh, Three River Evening Star pattern, and that's up at the uh, 13229 uh, level. Price close above that, it negates that uh, sell pattern out there. Um, the uh, Russell 2000 is above its oscillator and change line, so it says more counter trend move. The semis are likely targeting their oscillator and change line. That's up at the price point of 29.93. The transports are trading above that, so a further counter trend move. The Nasdaq Composite already above its green oscillator and change line. That says it wants to target the high from just a few days ago. That high at 12.261. And New York Stock Exchange likely targeting 15.388. Roger, I hope that helped you out. We come back from this break. We're going to take a look at AZN for Mike in Florence, Italy. And then we're gonna look at wheat for Ron R. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, stock uh, chart for AstraZeneca. Uh, Mike has a friend who's uh, got some nice profits in this, is considering uh, or where to exit. So if we look at the monthly time frame chart, the very right-hand side, it's bullish. You're above the top of its profile. You're above a green oscillator and change line. You don't have any kind of a topping pattern. 
you do have a signal. It's a road's momentum indicator signal, but you need a bearish reversal candle. If you look at the weekly, although it's not confirmed, meaning that the B point was taken out with volume, this did have a TD9 count. That was negated. This is bullish, and you've got an A to B equals CD pattern. That gives you a price projection of 81.99. So you're asking, where is it that maybe would be a place to exit? 81.99-ish would be a level. Now, the daily time frame did generate wave number seven, that's letter G, a road's momentum indicator top. And a price did close below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. But you're back inside it now. So I would have a real hard time saying sell now. Um, if price can close above 75.35, that's the green oscillator and change line. That will tell you price is going to get back to that 76.20 area. And as price moves higher into this uh, gap, what it would need, you'd need to look at volume of about, as it moves to that swing point, about 4.4 million shares. You're at 1.2 today. But right now, you're consolidating inside that daily profile. Mike, I don't see a reason to sell. And as far as that price target area, it's up around the 81.99 level. Let's take a look at our next request. It was a take a look at the wheat charts out there. And in the case of wheat, looks like we do have a uh, bottom. If we look at the daily time frames, WAT is what uh, was requested. But that requires us to look at the July, September, and December contracts for wheat, each which have TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator tops. Price right now is trading above the top of the bearish structure profile for the July contract. And what wheat also has, it's got those beautiful TD9 count bottoms for July and December of, I'm sorry, uh, uh, July and September of 2023. Uh, let's get over and take a look at this next request, which uh, see if I can get there quick enough. Uh, this one was uh, CBX. What do we have for CBX? CBX. Uh, is going to form a TD9 count bottom today. That should take price up to 163.85. Price did hold its bullish structure daily profile. Lastly, uh, IBRX. Let's see if we can get this one into. Come on, Stevie, let's do it. IBR. Oh, it's AZN. Shoot, where did it go? IBRX. Stay in this. You got to love this. You're only bar number six on a daily basis. This little rocket ship, and that rocket ship wants to continue to add higher. Its next resistance level about $7.45. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Marvelous Magnificent Monday. Take care. Be safe out there.